So we are going to plant switchgrass in this strip right here, this weedy strip here this year, and we are gonna do it with no tractor, no tiller, no disc, no plow, and it's actually better that way. And I'm gonna talk about how to do this, and this is what we've done for, this would be the 11th season planting switchgrass this way. We've planted by drill. We planted at different times. Um, out here, for example, we have about 15 acres of switch and counting, and uh, with all that switch, I think we put in about three with a drill. Uh, Brandon from First Choice Food Plots has come over. And there's, there's advantages to a drill, and there's disadvantages too, meaning it's hard to get one. It's hard to find one. They're expensive to go buy one. Uh, but we'll talk about this is an easy way to get switch involved. And people think right here that you have to disc this up, till it up, burn it. You don't have to do any of this. This whole strip right here is right around 150 yards long. You can barely see the switch grass that we have established already on that backside. So this would be a future connection. We have switch grass planted out here, all the yellow out in the field, if you see it anywhere, switch. I wanna start by, some of this is matted down right here. I want you to do the kick test. And you just give it, give it a good kick right there. You pull it away, and that's soil right there. There's soil right there, right? Down, you just one kick and the soil is there. And that tells you how easy it's going to be to get the switchgrass down through this vegetation. In fact, when it's standing vertical, like some of these places, the seed falls right onto the soil right immediately. We're not frost seeding this. I have a beautiful stand back here that was established end of June. It's back in the corner. Call it uh, redneck corner, because there was a redneck blind sitting right in the middle of a food plot there. Typical of how a lot of people hunt out here. And it's right in the middle of the food plot, at literally in the food plot. And uh, of course we don't do that. We actually turned it into a switchgrass field because we needed that access through there. We're gonna take this. It'll be a beautiful field of switchgrass. And this is literally foolproof if, if you follow the steps. That's so critical. Even if we spread switchgrass seed in here without doing anything, you'll get an occasional tough to switchgrass coming up. But that's not enough. We wanna have a full solid planting we don't want 10 percent showing so what we do here and there's always that balance you have to use chemicals or we come in here this is on a slant you can tell i keep going downhill the further i get down into here it just keeps going down if we disc this up if we plow it we risk major erosion not to mention we bring a bunch of weed seeds that we have to spray or control or more and more in the future so there's a big balance that you have to assess out here in the ag fields. We've had trenches come through the ag fields because they're disking, they're chisel plowing. Corn ends up growing on our land because it comes down. I'm not being, I'm not kidding with that. That's 10 or 12 locations out here on the property. We've had corn growing on our property from erosion out in the ag fields next to it. Anyways, we're going to hit this really light equipment. Got to follow these steps. It will work. The first thing we're doing is simazine before spring green up. Now, simazine doesn't really hit the grasses too much. In fact, you can spray it on switchgrass that's growing and it won't hurt the switchgrass in any way. If you spray too much simazine, it'll actually inhibit some of the switchgrass seeds from actually growing in the future or delaying their germination. Um, and we've found that out. I mean, we have examples of clients that have sprayed six times too much, five times too much, and we've seen that and been able to figure it out and diagnose it where they didn't spray, it's growing, where they sprayed heavily, it's not growing, where it was just marginally sprayed, there's little tufts there that grew later. So you can diagnose that pretty easily, but simazine at three quarts per acre is critical for that first step. Now we're in early March, there's no frost in the ground, there's no ice, simazine stays in the ground for about 60 days. So any time in here in mid-March, that'll get us to mid-April time, Spring green up takes place in April around here, maybe even late March this time, this year, since we don't have much snow. But bottom line is, by getting that simazine down right now, that chemical will be in the ground and take care of a portion of the weeds that will be coming. Once green has popped out here, it's too late for those weeds. Now there's those early, early emerging grasses that that simazine is not gonna take care of anyways. So we're looking for those later maturing or emerging uh, broadleafs. They'll take care of a portion of that. So three quarts per acre. Real quick, just on how do you know it's three quarts per acre? Don't fall for ounces per gallon, anything like that. It's quarts per acre. Glyphosate's two quarts. 240 is in pints. Um, 
a quinchloric, which is for foxtail, that's more in ounces, but it's always per acre. Because we don't know what your spray rate is of your ATV. You, do, you can't just say ounces per gallon because it doesn't matter if it's five gallons of water to deliver the chemical or 20 gallons. You need to figure out what your spray rate is and then add appropriately. If that's 12 and a half gallons per acre, then you can add your chemical to 25 gallons and you can go effectively spray two acres. Maybe you're really efficient. You have nine nozzles, seven nozzles for sprayer. You can be more efficient with something like that. That's only 10 gallons per acre. But bottom line, three quarts per acre of simazine, and that sets the table. That's your first spraying. That's your first chemical application to guard against weeds because the death of all switchgrass is weed and shade competition. It will not grow. It kills it out. Even tall, like bluegrass. That's why a lot of times CRP mixes that have a pound and a half per acre of switch in it, the switch is gone in three or four years because the other grasses that are taller in there, like Indian grass or big blue stem, shade it out and kill it. Three quarts per acre before spring green up. And then after spring green up, I'm looking for those weeds are 10, 12 inches high. It's a decent day. Right now it's 42 degrees, I think, somewhere around there. Not a decent growing day if it was later in the spring. So we're looking for something when the temperatures are 60, 70, good sunshine, weeds are growing fast. The harder they're growing, the faster they're growing, the easier they are to kill. And we're looking for those weeds are 10, 12 inches high. And then we're going to spray this with one pint per acre of 2,4-D mixed with two quarts per acre of glyphosate. That's a really good combination. The 2,4-D is an enhanced broadleaf killer because glyphosate is actually the weakest herbicide you can spray. Won't kill clover. Doesn't kill a lot of broadleaf, smartweed, pigweed, water hemp. So you have to add that, that broadleaf specific chemical to it. But bottom line is we're doing that 10, 12 inches. Now, I would, I would guess this year we might be spraying that first spring in early April. A lot of times it's end of April is that, that first spring of 2,4-D and uh, glyphosate. Simazine is typically in March, so we're right on that, that time frame right now. And then we're going to spray a second time with one pint per acre of 2,4-D and two quarts per acre of glyphosate approximately four weeks after the first time. Notice I haven't said anything about putting seed down. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. We'll be right back. I really want you to check out our seed company, Pure Wildlife Blends. We changed the name from WHS to reflect Pure, what our seed's all about and our company's all about. Right now is a great time to be putting down our perennial, our green max traffic blend for trails and around the water holes, our switchgrass, our summer soil explosion. It's amazing what people are buying right now, even going all the way into the fall, getting all their seed available right now. We'll have it all year though, you don't have to rush. Check it out while you're at it, while you're on the website, check out our how you design your white tail parcel. It's a great web class and some of the other ones. We have lots to offer, including the books too. Make sure you don't miss out. Now back to the video. Notice I haven't said anything about putting seed down. Anything. It takes switchgrass a good 10 days to two weeks when damp to emerge. By then, typically the 2,4-D is out of the ground. You can broadcast at the time of your second spring of 2,4-D and glyphosate. I recommend you waiting at least five to seven days. Broadcast your seed, and that's the last step. Broadcasting your seed. Now you've had three effective weed controls. We're talking end of May, middle of May by that time. You know, most switchgrass doesn't germinate until it hits 55 to 57 degrees soil temperature. That's a very good thing because that's end of May, early June around here at the earliest. So we're getting the switchgrass still on the ground right at the time it should be emerging. The, light, the most you lose is a couple weeks. Now, of course, if you don't get good immediate rain and the soil temperatures are warm, that perfect combination, we have switchgrass back here around our 67 big plot, we call it, last year that germinated more in July, mid to late July, finally with some rain. It's only a foot tall, 18 inches tall. That's okay. It's still gonna turn into a great field of switchgrass. We just need to mow it, and that's year two, some different uh, steps that you do there. The bottom line is rain eventually comes, the seed is very hardy, and that's been a foolproof way to get switchgrass growing. And then from there, you know, once you get that switchgrass on the ground, you get some decent moisture, you expect that to be germinating sometime the end of June, middle of June, right around there, end of June, first week of July. If you have complete drought, like we did last year, maybe that'll turn into July sometime. It'll eventually grow, and because you've effectively controlled the weeds, then you don't have that competition for the first year. You can imagine if you disc it up, till it up, plow it up, it's a whole weed seed that's, weed bank that's exposed. You know what's interesting? 
We find that in some of our bigger briar areas, we actually, or, or gray dogwood, where that's been a monoculture for years, there's fewer weeds. So we find sometimes the switchgrass grows really well in those areas because there's no weed competition. But when it gets into that July time frame, you're really looking for weed competition. Learn what switch is. Round, reddish, brownish stem, perfectly round. No hair on the stem. When you pull back one of the leaves away from the stem, there'll be a little half circle of white hair, very, very, very fine and small against the leaf where it was hitting the shaft and against that stem. You get those two to happen, you have switchgrass. Switchgrass is kind of wispy. It's leaning over a little bit at the top. It's a real slender, elegant grass. Learn to identify it, but bottom line is when these weeds are starting to overtake the switchgrass in July, if that happens, come in here and just mow it. Mow it with a zero turn mower that you mow your yard with, a lawn tractor, tractor and brush hog, whatever it is, but you mow down to wherever that switchgrass layer is so that the sun can now hit the switchgrass. What you'll find is you come back in early August, that switchgrass is growing past and above your weeds because it's hit that exponential growth phase. Switchgrass, the end of June, if it germinates in June, might be two, four, five inches. End of July, it might be seven, eight, 10 inches. By the end of August, it typically is 40 inches plus. And if you're more in Indiana, Illinois, and south, it might even be five feet. So you get that better growth. That's all we're doing in that first year. We're not hitting it with any other chemicals. We're just mowing in July, letting it go. The following year, you can spray simazine on it again. Again, the simazine won't hit, hurt the switch. You do it before spring green up. And then what we're doing that second year, if we have a lot of weeds, we're mowing in May sometime. Again, with those weeds are 10, 12 inches. And then when you get into June, then we'll spray 1.5 pints per acre of 2,4-D on it. This is why it's so critical to know what your actual coverage rate is. Don't go by ounces per gallon. That'll lead you astray and smoke out your switchgrass. 1.5 pints per acre. Doesn't matter if that takes five gallons or 25 gallons to deliver it. You have to know your spray rate. That takes care of a lot of your broadleaf growing. It'll also take care of, we have areas out here that's in the third and fourth year of management where we'll, we'll mow in May, we'll hit it with 2,4-D and we're mowing out actual aspen and briars within that stand. And then we'll have a beautiful clean stand this year. And if you have a, a foxtail problem, which is a major problem in some areas, then you're hitting it with five to seven ounces of quinchloric per acre in that first year of full growth, that second year after planting. So that'd be 2025 for us right now if you're watching this in 2024 when you shot it. So those are the steps we use for the year one, year two. And at some point, whether it's year two, the end of year two, or the beginning of year three, we're leaving the switchgrass alone and it'll give us at least 10, 12 years before most of the time before we're ever touching it again. So do it right the first time. We never have to burn it because we're using mowing and chemicals. Burning, a lot of times if you have certain varieties of weeds and switch in the stand, it just gives you more weeds and switch in the stand. So it doesn't, burning isn't switchgrass specific for being helpful. So instead you can mow, use chemicals, but really once you put it in right and you follow these exact steps, don't miss any, then you end up having a beautiful stand of switchgrass that you can use, maintain, and lightly maintain for decades to come.